Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. My name is Karen Cook, and I will be your guest host for today. I am filling in for Kathy. So welcome to the show, everybody. Today we are talking about fur baby finances. So for all of you out there that have your little fur babies, your cats, your dogs, mainly, but your hamsters, your mice, whatever you uh, desire. So um, we're going to look at the cost of having those pets, mainly focusing on dogs and cats. So don't you just love your pet? Isn't it great to have such unconditional love? those kisses, and that never-ending wagging tail. Well, before you do add that pet to your family, or as we've added those pets to our family, let's talk about the financial and emotional costs of having a pet. I My life's gone to the dogs. I have dogs. Uh, but to be quite honest with you, when I was a little girl, I was afraid of absolutely anything and everything that moved. God forbid a dog, a a puppy, a kitten, a cat, a mouse ran across the street or I saw it. I'm telling you, I would jump off my bike. I would jump onto people. I remember once jumping onto my friend's older brother right off of my bike because there was a dog a block away. And I would scream and freak out and panic, almost a panic attack, I suppose it would be today. So uh, it was not good. Right, so I never knew why I was afraid, never knew, understood it. When I was an adult, my mother said to me, when you were a little girl, our neighbors threw a Siamese kitten in your face and it clung to your face. I know, I just did it too, for those of you that went, ah, at home. So I do have a little scar, never knew where the scar came from. Well, I found out many years later why. So I guess I blocked it out, which is probably not a bad thing, but there, hence the reason for me me being afraid of cats, a cat, and dogs. So my father thought, oh, this is not going to work. So he went out to our mall, and he brought home this god-awful five-pound little white poodle. Well, I tell you, you might as well have been an elephant. I packed my bags. I was eight years old. I was getting the heck out of Dodge. And I looked in this box, and I saw this little fart, and I thought, oh, he's kind of cute. It took me a little bit to get my hand in there to touch him, but I'm going to tell you something. The minute I did, that was it. It was over. I was a dog lover. I suppose if he'd have brought a cat, my life would have gone to the cats. But I went to the dogs. So we had that dog for nine months, and unfortunately, my sister and I uh, watched him get hit by a car. Very devastating. We went out to the breeders, got Casey number two. And by the way, the dog was named after my sister and I, our initial Casey. So we got the other one. He lasted 19 years and eight months, and he was put down. Um, he um, he had quite a few strokes. His body was failing, so he was unfortunately put down um, just four months shy of his 20th birthday, actually. Little did I know my first little baby was waiting for me, and I ended up rescuing my doughy a few months later. Uh, as an adult, from going to a pound at four and a half months. And Doey was a purebred Chinese Sharpe. So if you're anything like me, you absolutely love your pet. I fell in love with this dog the very first day I got him. And my life has completely changed. So I had Doey for um, just over 14 years. He passed away a few years ago. But I also brought in another Sharpe, Lacey, my 11-year-old, who was 16 months when I got her. And she was heading to the pound because she was a little barker, and they lived in the city. She was at the breeders, and they were going to give her the pound because, you know, neighbors were complaining. You're only allowed three dogs in the city. The county, God forbid, I'm on a football team of them. But uh, so uh, I, I, I got Lacey at a pretty good deal. Her adoption fee was relatively decent. 
And Doey, he was from a friend of mine that was going to take him to a pound. So he only cost me an airplane ticket to send her off to vacation. And then come my, and so these are Canadian dogs. But my little one, Piper, is a five-year-old mini chocolate brown Sharpe, and she's my American little girl from Iowa. So uh, I, I've gone to the Sharpe's. There isn't a thing I wouldn't do for them. There isn't a thing I wouldn't give them. I bought my house. So you want to talk about finances. I bought my house out in the county, fenced it in because it was a, it was a ranch house, so there weren't a lot of stairs for them or me. Fence the yard in. They have a quarter acre to run around on. And they can't get hurt. Nothing's going to hurt them. They can't get out. Nothing gets in. The, ha- the house, the fence, everything has been dog-proofed. So that was a little bit of an expense. Now, I can't say I bought the house just for them. Let's be honest. I do live here. But I always say, hey, girls. And I said to my doy when he was here, this is your house. Mommy's just here to clean it and pay the bills. And that's exactly what I do. I clean it, I feed them, I take care of them, I take them to the vet, I drive them around, and of course, I clean the house. So uh, the finances don't just start and end with purchasing a dog. So um, sometimes they can be expensive, cats and dogs. I think dogs are probably on average a little more expensive. Uh, medication seems, they're bigger, right? So on and generally, dogs are a bigger animal. Of course, medication, you're talking about bigger doses or more shampoo and conditioner or bigger treats. I better watch that word. I just had two little eyeballs look up from her nap thinking she was going to eat. So uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, the longer we have our dogs or our cats, the longer they experience things. So of course, uh, it costs money. And just like people get diseases, illnesses, injuries, so do your pets. And whatever we can experience, they can experience. So uh, my Joey had thyroid problems the last couple years of his life. And near the end, it was a liver uh, issue. So he was on pills for that. Not a problem. Listen, I don't care what it costs. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to do whatever it takes to take care of my dogs. Now, if you know anything about a Chinese Sharpe, they have some issues, as a lot of breeds can. The Chinese Sharpe sometimes have eye issues. They end up with entropin. So the eyelids actually invert. So when they blink, their eyelashes can cause ulcers on the eyes. Doey had that, and his eye surgery cost me about $2,500. When I first got him, uh, he was four and a half months, and I immediately called, and I got pet insurance. Right, because I thought, you know what? I researched it. I talked to the vet, and he suggested it. So I call. I looked into some companies. And I was pretty wet behind the ears, so I didn't know a lot about it. I know a lot more today, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years later, but I didn't know. So I I called, and what does it cover, and how does it work? Not thinking to say, by the way, I have a Chinese Sharpe, because I I was around poodles, right? Only. So this is all new for me, a bigger dog, different breed, don't know it. So they said, oh, yeah, no, we cover this, 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 and this. I said, okay, fine. I ordered the insurance. Three weeks later, Doey had to have eye surgery. So we had it. He has to have it now. He's getting ulcers. He could lose his sight. Well, holy crap, right? Like, of course, let's do this. So I take him. I get the surgery done. I get all the receipts. I submit them. And guess what? (laughs) <laughs> oh, Karen, you're still in the waiting period. I said, what waiting period? There's a 30-day waiting period. I said, I didn't know that. Nobody told me that. It's not in any paperwork. I, I wasn't told that. I didn't ask. So I guess it's my fault, right? So it wasn't told. So they weren't very forthcoming with their information. And then the guy says to me, oh, by the way, you have a Chinese Sharpe. I said, yes. You didn't tell us that. I said, well, I didn't think it mattered a pet's a pet dog a dog right oh no we don't cover chinese sharpay's eyes ears or skin because those apparently are the three main issues with a chinese sharpay so i'm thinking oh my god like these are the three big things and some of them don't cover gastrointestinal and doey had it all 
right? Thank goodness I was able to fix it a lot with talking to my vet and a lot of things we could do without medical intervention. But other than that, I thought, well, why have it? But I kept it. I kept it for a little while. So, I mean, when you think about what I'm paying per month, and I think I was paying about $40, $50 a month. We'll say $45 because I can't really remember. This was 17 years ago. So I think I was paying that, and I thought, it's not bad. We'll see what happens. Come to find out he needed special food from the vet, special treats, special shampoo, special conditioner, uh, and they covered it. I thought, wow, I had my vet write a prescription. This dog needs this for this reason. And thank goodness they covered that. So, Because the shampoo, uh, they went to somebody to get their hair done. And uh, I, I had I supplied the shampoo because it had to have an oatmeal base. It had to have this, that, non uh, hypoallergenic. So you might not know this, right? Who knew? I thought you could use Johnson's baby shampoo. Well, I bathed him once and I thought, oh, dear God, I must have left the shampoo on him. He's losing all his hair on his back. The vet says, no, he's got dry skin. You got to give him this and that. And I'm like, oh, my God. So now I have to give him these pills to lubricate his skin. But yeah, that was covered as long as he wrote the prescription. So the insurance helped. So I was paying maybe 45 a year back then. And as you know, things go up. So it's a little bit more expensive today. But say 45 a year, you're probably looking at, you know, five, 600 a year, or sorry, yeah, a month per year. So I'm looking at that. Um, paying for some food, which was 75 a bag, go through for a year, that's 300 a year, times 14 years is for over $4,000. Uh, they were allergic to bees. Had an emergency bee vet, bee sting vet visit, 500 bucks. They covered it. Medications, thyroid pills, uh, liver pills, covered, right? Uh, the special treats, the food, the shampoo, covered, right? So um, later on in life, when he was about seven, he tore his ACL, anti-cruciate ligament, those little ligaments in, that hold the knee together. And I'll be darned if three weeks later he didn't do the other one, so that was a $5,000 pop. It's covered, okay? He was checked for hip dysplasia. 300 and something, covered. And there's more. But over the years, you kind of forget. So was it worth having the insurance? Right? So you weigh it out and you have to look at what kinds of things am I going to look at for insurance? So if my expenses were about $13,000 over his lifespan and I paid less than 10000 for the insurance, I probably did okay. And that's not including what was covered, right? So there's more on top of that. So it could have been 18000 So I did pretty well. But you have to look at that when you're, you're kind of looking at your insurance. And we're going to get into all this. So I'm here today to help educate on pet insurance and the benefits. And if you have a pet, don't jump the gun as I did. Don't buy whatever's there just to get it. And if it's not covered, don't cancel it right away because it might work. Pet insurance is not for everyone. It needs to be financially feasible. So if you have a healthy animal and there's no specific issues with your breed, you might not need pet insurance. So if you have a pet, and we will go over a few of these breeds later on in the show, and we'll talk about certain breeds. And I mean, there are hundreds, thousands of breeds of animals out there, cats and dogs. So you just look at, what type of animal you have, look up the breed and find out what issues they have and talk with your vet about it because your vet's a really good source to determine whether or not you should look at, at pet insurance because mine thought it might be feasible for a Sharpay. But if you're like me and have Sharpays, you want to make sure that you know what is and isn't covered. Okay. So on that note, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to talk about what pet insurance is and how these policies work. So it's time for our first break of the show. And you are listening to Financially Speaking with Karen Cook on the Inspired Choices Network. And we will be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. 
We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Karen Cook, and today our show topic is Fur Baby Finances. So let's talk about pet insurance. So you might be saying, what the heck is pet insurance? Well, pet insurance pays in part or in total for veterinary treatment of your insured pet. So whether the pet is ill or injured, if you have insurance, it's most likely covered. Some policies even pay out when the pet dies or if the pet is lost or stolen, right? And we'll talk about how. So as veterinary medicine is increasingly employing expensive medical techniques and medications, and of course, owners have higher expectations for their pet's health care and standard of living than previous, the market for pet insurance is increasing, right? Pets are living, we're living longer. We have, well, I hope we have insurance. Pets are living longer, and as we live longer and pets, more issues, illnesses, diseases, ailments happen, and insurance comes in handy. So policies work in a few different ways. So pet insurance is actually a form of property insurance. So pet insurance reimburses you after your pet has received care and you submit the claim to the insurance company. Normally, they primarily cover dogs, cats, horses, although more exotic species of animals can obtain coverage. So if you have a mink or something, you can, you might be able to get coverage for it. So policies in the United States and Canada either pay off a benefit schedule or a pay percentage of the vet cost. The percentages usually range between 70 and 100%. Sometimes you might have a deductible. So depending on the company and the policy will depend on the deductible you can get. So you might pay 30%, 20%, 10%, or 0%, uh, and, and the company pays the rest. So it depends on the policy that you get. So what happens is you pay the vet, you get the uh, receipt, you send it in, and you get your reimbursement. That's usually how it happens. If you have very high bills like I've had, Right here, pay the 5000 Well, you know, I went down to a Mississauga Oakville Veterinarian Emergency Hospital, which is about a good two-hour drive from me. That's where that's my go-to. Awesome place. So I took my dog there. Well, there's no payment plan. You got to pay or you don't get your dog or your cat, and I'm not leaving without my animal. So it went on my credit card. I send their information, and they reimburse me the percentage that I, I don't have to worry about from the deductible. So... um you can, though, sometimes, if it's your vet, pay off in installments or until you get 
that money back because I've been going to my vet now, uh, well, on my own dogs, 18 years. So he knows me pretty well. Okay. So you definitely want to talk to your vet about insurance, coverage, paying, things like that. And sometimes uh, you can have them paid directly. So I can have the company pay the vet directly. Most American Canadian policies require the pet owner to submit a request, though. Okay. So ask. Ask how the payment works. Uh, and a lot of the time in the past, most pet insurance plans didn't cover preventative care, which is vaccinations, or elective procedures, which is neutering. Although I could argue that when you get an animal, well, I can speak for dogs, you had a puppy when I got my little Piper, she's five years old now, but I got her from a breeder and the contract said she had to be spayed. She's a female, so she's spayed, males are neutered. And she had to be spayed at six months. So I talked to my vet about that, and at six and a half months, she was spayed. So if that is part of the contract, is that elective or is it necessary? Right? But we'll talk about how some of that can be covered later on. So some companies in Canada and the United States are offering routine care coverage, sometimes called this comprehensive coverage. So dental care, prescription drugs, alternative treatments, and physiotherapy, acupuncture are now becoming something that can be covered. Okay? So there's two categories when you're looking at insurance. There's non-lifetime and lifetime, just like your own insurance. Sometimes you get term, you get whole life, you get universal life. Right, So depending on the insurance you get will depend on what's covered in the cost. So non-lifetime is just that. It's only covering for, for conditions of your pet during the policy, the course of the policy. So if something's happened in this policy, they can exclude it when you renew. Okay, So it might not be something you want to look at. So let's look at, but it might be cheaper. But as you keep renewing and conditions happen, the pet gets older, just like ours, it's going to get more expensive. So lifetime covers the pet through its whole life. So whether or not you get the insurance, six months after you get it, your dog gets diabetes, you're covered for the rest of the dog's life. Okay? So there's no limits per condition, per timing, per life, right? It would all be covered. And you'd ask that. Ask, ask, ask a lot of questions and don't be afraid to ask. There are so many companies out there that everybody's in competition. So ask the questions. If you don't like the answers, you don't like the person you're dealing with, you don't feel all warm and fuzzy, then don't go with that in company. Okay? So um, if you have an animal with a pre-existing condition, don't lie about it. They'll find out. And then your coverage is canceled and you're going to pay the money back. So pre-existing conditions aren't going to be covered. But don't wait. If you want to get insurance, do your research, get on the computer, talk to the companies, do your checklist, and go with what's best for you. A lot of the time, as I found out very quickly, there is a short waiting period. A lot of the time, it's only about 14 days, okay? And then two weeks later, you're covered. So there's a lot of difference between companies, all right? Not every company is the same, but they are similar. It's like our life insurance. You're getting it for your pet, your pet insurance. So you want to look at what's best for your pet, all right? So um, a lot of pet insurance companies are beginning to offer pet owners more of an ability to customize their coverage because they allow you to choose the level of deductible or co-insurance, right? And this allows the pet owner to control their monthly premiums and choose the level of coverage that suits them the best. So some of the differences, which pets are covered? Is it dogs, cats, horses, exotic pets? What about con uh, congenital or hereditary conditions? So if your dog is prone in that breed, is it covered? How do they calculate the reimbursement? Ask them. Is there a deductible per incident or per year? That can get costly if it's per incident. If I'm paying 100 per incident or 100 a year, holy crap, holy, that's quite a difference. Okay, what if you had 10 incidents in a year? It's $1,000 versus $100 for the whole year. So ask about that. Uh, whether there are limits or caps applied. So is it going to be the pet's lifetime, the age, 
Is it per year, per incident? Find out. And is there an annual contract that will determine anything diagnosed in the previous year? So can they use a pre-diagnosed condition against me the next year if it's a yearly contract? So find out. Lifetime is that. You have it for life. Okay? So some of the questions we might ask, or you might be asking yourself right now, how much is pet insurance? Right? Well, it depends on the provider. It depends on the type of coverage. It depends on if it's a cat, a dog, a horse, uh, a mink, right, something, a ferret, I don't know. So you have to find out. On average, uh, you can expect, really with a dog, probably 30 to 50, maybe a little higher per month. With a cat, maybe 10 to maybe 30. You could pay more depending on the coverage, okay? What does it cover? What does pet insurance cover? It's designed to help cover vet costs if your pet is ill, gets injured, or has an accident. I don't mean an accident of peeing on your floor. I mean, God forbid your your animal gets hit and survives, right? You want it to be taken care of, right? Without pet insurance, you have to pay all this yourself. And like I told you, $5,000 for two eyes. $5,000 for two knees, and the little one here had her eyes done once and then had the other eye done twice. So she had it closer to home. So she was a $3,000 pot within a couple years. So uh, without pet insurance, guess what? Out of pocket. Okay. So look at things that could maybe happen and think, is it feasible for me? And they do vary. The policies do vary. They can include different coverages. So things you might want to ask about. Dental. Does it cover dental treatment? And I mean, is it, what if I want my dog's teeth cleaned? What if my dog's older and there's plaque on it? What if my dog has an injury with its mouth? What if your pet passes away? Some companies offer compensation. Advertising fees and reward money if your pet goes missing. Cost money to make signs, put up signs. Throw ads, I mean, Facebook might be for your Kijiji, but you might want to use your paper, the radio, the TV, right? Listen, I'd be having the big old blimp going across my city if my dog went missing. Uh, Boarding fees. So if you're temporarily unable to care for your pet or you're moving, you have to board your pet temporarily, it can be covered. We want to ask, what about third-party liability coverage? What if my dog injures somebody? I work from home. I have people in my home. I teach first aid classes, vision board workshops. I don't have kids in my home. I go to a facility. But adults, I'm talking 18 or over. My dog's very nice, very friendly, sound like they beat you alive when you come up because God forbid they don't protect me. But if they bit somebody, that is where third-party liability coverage comes into effect. Okay, so that it's just like your car insurance. You get in a car accident. You don't say to the guy, hey, here's 100 bucks out of my pocket. You call your insurance company where you're supposed to, right? Same thing. So what we want to do is find out what's going to be covered and what's not. Pre-existing conditions, not covered. Routine medical treatment, checkups, neutering, spaying, vaccinations may not be covered. Cosmetic, holistic medicine, acupuncture, massages, hydrotherapy may not be covered. Any condition that you could have prevented by keeping your dog or cat or animal on routine vaccinations. Not covered. So if you don't get that flea and tick medication and your dog gets it, your insurance isn't going to cover it because you didn't get their routine uh, annual vaccination. And any international costs. I like to travel into the United States, so I better make sure that my insurance covers my poor little guys in case something were to happen. So these are all the things you want to ask because You can get riders on your pet insurance just as you can your insurance if this stuff isn't covered. Okay, on that note, we're going to break for the second time. And when we get back, we'll talk about different types of pet insurance. My name is Karen Cook, and you're listening to Financially Speaking today on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook-Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health 
which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. I am Karen Cook, uh, Financially Speaking today, and we are talking about fur baby finances. So let's talk about different types of pet insurance. So you want to know what's best for you, and it depends on a number of factors. The age of your pet, its susceptibility to illness, and how much you're willing to pay, right? So there's four main types. There's accident only. That covers your pet in the event of an accident, but not long-term illnesses. It's the cheapest, but it has the least coverage. There's time limited, so it covers everything, but only for a limited a time. So renewing could be more costly because now you might have pre-existing conditions. Maximum benefit covers illnesses, accidents, up to a maximum amount per condition. But there's no time limit on how long you can claim. There's just a max on the condition. So the entropin surgery, the ACL surgery, hip dysplasia, there's a max on it. It might not be the full amount. The lifetime pet insurance is the most complete. It covers accidents, injuries, illnesses for the whole life of your pet. There may be limits to the policy you have to ask. It is the most expensive, but it's affordable. You might pay $60, $70 maybe 80, could pay up to 100, uh, but it does have the most coverage. And the money never changes, regardless if your animal gets diabetes, cancer, breaks bones, disease, any illnesses, blindness, deafness, medications, anything, any condition, any illness, any accident related to aging. So when you're comparing pet insurance, know the age of your dog, the breed, or or cat, or horse, gender, and how much... Um, you know how know how much you kind of want to pay, all right? If you have gotten your dog from a shelter, you tell them that how much you paid or donated for the dog that could be a bonus, all right? Uh, and there's some things uh, with service dogs and and shelter dogs and donations. We'll talk about when you get into tax deductions. So. You're gonna you're gonna think well you know how how is my pet insurance is it tax deductible? Well how how do I do this? Well in the United States the IRS says a big fat no, so at tax time you can't count those bills as itemized medical deductions. <laughs> However, the Internal Revenue Code does allow for some instances when you can write off some of the cost of your pet. So if your pet is put to work. You can deduct job-related expenses. In Canada, the Canada Revenue Agency, uh, again, does even though I consider them my girls, my babies, they aren't exactly dependents like our children. So they're not considered tax tax deductible. However, you may be able to claim the animals if you have a specially trained service animal or a work-related animal. So they can be covered. Uh, So depending on what my animal is used for, okay, and we'll talk about that. So when you are getting your health insurance for your dog, your pet insurance, you'll want to know what kind of plans are out there, what you're going to need it for, if you're going to have a service animal, a work animal, because there are deductions for things like that. If you're donating to shelters, Rescuing a dog from a shelter, being a foster parent for an animal at a shelter, you can get tax deductions on food, donations, toys, leashes, collars, beds, dishes, special food, treats, medicine, toys, 
you can deduct some of the percentage of that. Okay. So as far as the service dog goes, yes, 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 absolutely tax deductible. Any medical expenses, training, maintenance on the guide dog or any other service animal to assist a person that needs one, so, uh, any disability. In general, you can deduct the cost of owning a service dog from your taxes. Now, I, I haven't seen a service cat yet, but I do know cats are therapeutic as well. But you'll have to ask. I've seen the dogs, and I know they're starting to use the mini horses, so they would be tax deductible. If you were the trainer, you'd be able to deduct that as well. Okay. Um, as I said, um, some things could be excluded. So as far as genetic conditions go, congenital disorders that might be present at birth, may not show signs until later on. So you may, you and your vet don't know about this. You don't know the dog has an issue or cat. You don't tell the vet it's okay because you didn't lie. The policy's not going to be void because there's no record of it. So some cases, they may be hereditary through through different breeds, but tell the breed, the age, the gender of your animal and find out what is and isn't covered depending on that company. So there's a lot of companies out there. Uh, when I looked, I looked all over online to find out some of the better known names. And the top three that I found that kept coming up with thumbs up, five stars, the whole thing for United States or Canada was PC Pet Insurance, True Panion Pet Insurance, and Pet Plan Pet Insurance. But there are a ton of them that were coming in the tops. There was uh, Pets Plus Us, Pet Secure, uh, more Canadian, in the estates, FIGO, Healthy Pets, Embrace, Pets Best, Pet Premium, ASPCA, AKC, Four Paws, Healthy Paws, Pet First, and 24 Pet Watch. So just to give you a little list. Right, And you'll be able to list this later because it'll be recorded so you can write them down if you're keeping track. Or you can just Google top ones and have a look at it. So depending on your breed, you'll want to know what kinds of issues are out there. I do know now about the Chinese Sharpays. So I have to make sure that the eyes, skin, ears, gastrointestinal, or at least some of that's covered. Come on, guys. That is expensive. My God, I had the, what, what was the bionic man, the? Million dollar man, I had the million dollar dog, I'm telling you. So you want to know what's covered and what's not. So um, some tax tips for animal lovers. So here is where we get into the nitty gritty. So certain dog related expenses may be deductible. Now I say dog, but if you can put your cat in this category, hey, by all means, go for it. What, what are they going to tell you? No? Oh, my God, the world ends, right? So what? Ask. Ask, 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 ask. Right? Don't be afraid to ask ever because it's money. It's your money, it's your finances, so ask. So I say dog, but, hey, you can go ahead and associate your cat in this example, but there's a reason for this one. So I do work alongside my dogs, Okay. So I have an office. I have two offices, one outside my home on my property and one inside my home. This is my work. They don't go with me to out workplaces outside of my house. But some things could be tax deductible. Now, my one dog is, oh, big mama here. She's 52 pounds. And the other one is about 40 um, the 52 pound one good size. She's my guard dog. She guards the property. She's indoor indoor dog. She doesn't stay outside, but she's out there a lot. She protects the house. She protects the contents. She protects my work area. So um, she is considered a guard dog, but a percentage, not 100%, because I don't work from home all the time. But she is guarding the house. The little one's 42 ish pounds. Um, I don't use her as a guard dog. My God, if you saw her, you think she's a little fart in a windstorm to me. But uh, when I look at them close enough, I think, yeah, you can tell the size difference. But she's my guard dog. So I can, for some of my expenses, use her as a tax deduction. Some of the vet expenses, they're, she's on special food. Uh, she guards my house. So, yeah, she's my guard dog. And my first one was. He would come to work with me. I used to... Uh, uh, take care of a business, mostly when it was closed. 
So I never went alone, obvious reasons. At night, I'm not going to fix alarms and people doing things and trying to break in. So yeah, I got my dog. So he was my guard dog. So yes, he was a good tax break as well. Um, so you could do that. Uh, ranchers and farmers who use dogs for herding or guarding livestock can usually write off the cost of buying, training, and feeding their dogs. For example, in 2002 in Canada, a farmer was rejected for his claim for his cat and dogs. He claimed cat and dog food to the Tax Court of Canada because he said the dogs protected the herd and the cats kept the mice and ate them and cleaned out the barn and kept it safe for the rest of the animals. And they kept animals away from certain um, things he was growing. So he actually was allowed, well, guarding blueberries. He had blueberries, apparently, that the animals were guarding. And he was allowed that. So if you get rejected, ask again, find out, right? So anything that the ranchers and farmers could also include would be groomers, maybe pet sitters, or similar professionals, because you need this for your dogs. Okay? So sometimes you can absolutely use your pet as a guard pet. I don't think that you're going to get away with using your 13-pound beach on freeze as your guard dog or your 17, 18-year-old cat that might be 14 pounds but might be hard of hearing and visually impaired. Probably not going to buy that. Um, and your little three-pound kitten meowing at me is probably not going to deter me from breaking in. So we're not talking about your teacup, chihuahuas, your little... You know, your little, uh, what are those little poodles, not the minute toy poodles, or, you know, what's Hollywood like? Oh, little dogs we can put in our purse. Yeah, probably not going to get away with that. But you can absolutely use a larger dog if you're using it for work, protection, guarding animals. You know, if I was dog sitting, I might have one that guards to keep us all safe. If I have a farm, right, a rancher, absolutely. So there's a lot of tax breaks that we can use. Um, so don't throw out your receipts. I mean, you have to keep your pet up. You have to take your pet to the vet. I have to take mine uh, twice a year. We go in for vaccinations where you get a vaccination certificate. And when we just went in to get ours, we go in the spring to get all this. And they're tested for, now don't even ask me what they mean because I'm not quite sure. I'd have to Google it. But lepto, rabies, corona, and what vaccine is called, the DA2PCPV, and they get all this. And it's good for a year. So that means if, God forbid, my dog bit somebody, I take this vaccination certificate so my dogs aren't taken, quarantined, or that person, oh, God, has to have rabies shots, right? So... You have to you have to take your animals in. So if you have pet insurance, you don't take your dog in. Your dog, my dog got rabies. So say my dog got rabies, I didn't take him in. Well, guess what? I'm paying for the rabies. I'm paying for all the medical costs associated with that because I could have prevented that by doing what I was supposed to do. So it costs money. Uh, and sometimes the routine stuff isn't paid. You might want to get a rider, this wellness or comprehensive plan. That in addition might cover this. But you look at the cost. Get your little pros and cons sheet out. Write it down. This is what it's going to cost me. 50 bucks to have insurance. 75 with the rider. But this is now covered. How often do you get the nails cut? The teeth clean? Spay and neutering? Microchip? And you can get breaks for that too, by the way. So if your dog is microchipped or spayed and neutered, you can get a break on the insurance. But don't wait. Because things happen. And if you buy a policy that covers it, it's covered when you get it done anyway. All right? So as long as you can prove that you're taking your animal in, well, for me, it's dogs, twice a year, spring and fall, to have our poop looked at. Well, not my poop, but have the dog's poop look at and get them checked and they get their shots and the vet looks them all over and says, hey, they're good couple days I find out everything's fine and we get our vaccination certificate and their little collar steel colored thing that goes on there that says hey they have all their shots so goodness forbid they get out someone can see yes they're covered for 2018 because it's important that you keep your dog up to snuff when you have insurance 
It's just like your car insurance, right? You have to make sure you follow the rules with your house, your car, and your pet so it's not invalid. Okay, we're going to go to our last break of the show. When we come back, I'm going to give you some more tax breaks and tips that you can do to use for your income tax in the United States and Canada. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back to Financially Speaking. I am Karen Cook, your guest host on the Inspired Choices Network. And today we are talking about fur baby finances. So before we left for the break, I was talking about some tax tips, some deductibles, and how you might be able to write off your cat or dog for a tax deduction. So I do have six specific tax breaks for pet owners that you can actually help uh, on your income tax okay so i know you love your pet i do oh my god the sun rises and sets on mine i do i i do everything around them everything is based around them so they're like my child right they're your child after all but the irs and cra just don't see it that way right they take the position that the money you spend on fido or fluffy is generally a personal expense. Your pet gives you pleasure, like the latte you bought on your way to work this morning, but just like that cup of coffee, it is not tax deductible. Neither is your pet, okay? So there are a few loopholes, however, that we can look at, and you might be able to deduct costs related to your pet if they serve another purpose, in addition to accepting my undying devotion and love. But you have to prove it. You can't just say, oh, by the way, I did this and that. You know how government works. You do your taxes every year. God, I hope you're doing them. And you have to provide proof, right? You have a business. You have your own business. You have to have proof. Was this a business-related expense? Prove that it was. Show me that it was, right? Is it a tax deduction? Same with your pet insurance. So first one, um, guard dog. Dogs with jobs. So a guard dog can be a legitimate write-off. Now, I say dog. Now, You could have a guard cat. Remember the pharma story before break. Tax deductible. Don't throw out your vet bills. Okay. So uh, this would include the cost of caring for the dog or cat, but not the dog itself. So special food, uh, special vaccinations, special training. It could be any prescription related to them being out there. So I might keep the vaccinations up, but things happen. They break a leg, they sprain something, they tear a ligament. It's going to be covered. That's wear and tear of the animal, right? So you can deduct a percentage based on how much time that animal spends guarding. So if you've got your barn cats, they're guarding all the time, aren't they? When I'm home and I have people coming out to take a workshop, my dog is working. Even when I'm not home, they're working, but they're not working 24 hours a day. When I'm here, it's usually me guarding the house, even though she thinks she's in charge. Uh, But I I absolutely am the alpha dog. But if you've got a guard dog that protects your business and your inventory, this could be a nice deduction. 
Okay, It's not a personal deduction. It's a professional deduction. So generally, it's difficult to claim your pet as a business expense. But if your pet guards your business location, you might be able to deduct the cost of keeping the animal fed and healthy and all the associated costs that go with it. So if you own and operate your business with dogs, of course your dog-related business expenses are deductible. So you have a shelter. You you sit dogs. You have a dog-sitting company. You go out and you sit dogs. You might have to buy treats, leashes, collars, certain clothes, right? Because you're not going to wear the same clothes around your house. Mine go nuts. I don't know about you. But I got to come in and say, oh, mommy's a cheating whore. I'm sorry. I went around another dog, but I love you the most. And I'm telling you, I get in the looks again. I get the sniffs and the licks and the crazy, ah, right? What'd you do, mom? You're terrible. So um, I, I have to change my clothes. Right. I got to get them off or they're going to go crazy. So you might have to buy certain things um, and you might want to learn how to train dogs and how to be around dogs. So there's courses you might take. Yep, they're legitimate expenses. OK, poop bags. Maybe you have to buy poop bags because you walk dogs for a living. You can write them off. Listen, poop bags add up after a while. Um, cats used for pest control. Talked about that. You can use that as a deductible write off. Hobby income. Maybe you show your pet. And yes, if you can prove that your animal is used for certain things, you can use them as a tax-related break. Show dogs, right? The dog wins, so the prize money uh, being the endeavor, the expenses incurred to train and show and things are deductible to the winnings, okay? Uh, so we can do that. How about fostering? How about being a foster pet parent? So if you foster dogs, if you work with animal rescues, dogs come to your house, right? So if you have an approved charitable donation receipt with their appropriate numbers and it's designated as a not-for-profit organization, you can get money back for that. It's not just a, hey, I did this and here's my money. It has to have their tax number on it, their designation number from their charitable organization. Service animals. If you have a service animal, as we talked about, you can write off the training, anything related to the upkeep of the dog, food, grooming, vet visits. What about moving your dog? If you have to move away and you can't take your dog right away and you have to board your dog, if you're 50 miles or kilometers away from your old workplace or home, you can get that covered. So they might pay your dog to sit there and board at another facility until you can get situated and get your dog brought or sent out to you. So there's so many things that you can do with your dog, your cat, your horse, your, your whatever to get these deductibles. Don't throw out your vet receipts if you have pet insurance. They can always say no. I'd rather put in more and them say no to me than to not put in enough and not get my money back. So I hope that you've learned a little bit about what's what can be beneficial to the pet insurance and the pet industry out there. And on one last note, I have to say it. I was watching the news the other day, and I just noticed that workplaces are revamping regulations and leads to include pets. In Minneapolis, in the United States, the, well, there is one company, the first to do this, that's allowing for what's called paternity leave. So when you get or adopt a pet, you get time off. So you're getting paid for a certain amount of time to bond with your puppy or dog. And they're using it for a benefit to retain employees because on average, people change jobs about every three years. So I think this is awesome. I think this is going to be something that's going to happen in the future. And I can't imagine. I think it's great. I know if you're not an animal lover, you're thinking, whatever. But come on. My life goes to the dogs. And I know yours must be too because you're listening to today. So thank you for joining me on the Inspired Choices Network. Financially speaking, I'm Karen Cook, and I hope you'll join me next week for a new topic. Everybody take care, be safe, have a wonderful week. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.